afternoon. First, the highlights. Legacy Gab and Hode Summit in commemoration of World Habitat Day. Nigeria Hydrological Services assures of control measures as the country prepares for potential flooding. And foreign in Kenya's deputy president faces impeachment of a corruption. And in sports, Nigeria Football Federation urges Tosin Adara Bioyo to make formal move for consideration in Super Eagle squad. And now the details, I am Mike James. Legacy government, through the Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development, has hosted a summit to celebrate the World Habitat Day, aimed at raising awareness, creating motivation, and promoting initiatives concerning the condition of human settlement globally. Speaking at the event with the theme, Engaging Youths to Create a Better Urban Future, Governor Babadide Saolu, who was represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Abimbola Salonde, reaffirmed the state's efforts in ensuring inclusive and sustainable youth's involvement in promoting a better urban future and making Lagos safe. The, uh, the governor said rapid urbanization and population expansion in the state requires intensified focus, as stated in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, as the SGDs 11, to create a better environment for all. Commissioner for Fiscal Planning and Urban Development, Olumide Oluyinka, said the event resonates with Governor Babajide Sawolu's administration's efforts to create a safe, secure, and inclusive government. According to him, in a bid to create an enabling environment for youth engagement, the administration has come up with various initiatives, including the Latif Jacqueline Leadership Academy and other youth focused programs, encouraging young ones to take ownership of their environment. It's not just a family choice, it is a necessity. It ensures that the cities we build today will be adaptable, resilient, sustainable for generations to come. Moreover, as we engage young minds, we continue to tap into a reservoir of innovation that can address the most pressing urban challenges in unique and effective ways. The chairman of a Papa local government area, Idu, Zimbanjo, has admonished residents to take proper care of themselves and make it a priority to go for routine medical checkup in all the healthcare centers and general hospitals. Zimbanjo gave the advice at the health outreach organized for residents for free services in cervical cancer screening, prostate cancer screening, blood pressure check, blood sugar testing. HIV screening, health education, promotion, and general medical consultations. She said the program was organized to promote community wellness and fitness for the people of Apapa and also help in early detection of health issues. Sembanjo, who promised to organize more medical interventions in the future, urged residents to embrace the opportunity of the free health screening to benefit immensely. Some women diagnosed with precancerous cervical at the program were referred to General Hospital Apapa. In interactive response to the current monkeypox outbreak in the country, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, NPHCDA, has announced that Bielsa and Riva State will be the first to initiate monkeypox vaccination exercise aimed at curbing the spread of the virus. The NPHCDA said five other states have been slated to follow suit. Director of Logistics and Health Commodities at the NPHCDA, Hawa Tense, said the decision to prioritize Bielsa and River State stems from their recent case numbers and the need to protect vulnerable populations. Tense noted that the average of 631 persons are expected 
to be vaccinated across the seven states with two doses of monkeypox vaccine, while a buffer for 50 persons will be kept at the national in case of an upsurge in other states. It will be recalled that on August 27, the United States government, through its Agency for International Development, donated 10,000 doses of the monkeypox vaccine to the federal government to support its efforts in responding to the current monkeypox outbreak. And now to the rest of the stories. The Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, NIHSA, has assured that water levels in the river Niger is under control as the country prepares for potential flooding. NIHSA's Director General Umar Mohammed, who said this in Abuja, stressed the importance of adhering to flood preparedness protocols. Mohammed said the water levels in the river Niger basin have been gradually receding since early October with Jeba currently spilling excess water in co coordination with operators of the Kainji Dam. He reaffirmed NIHSA's commitment to working with dam authorities, both nationally and internationally, to mitigate river flooding and support Nigeria's socio-economic growth. Mohamed Ada, that the agency will continue to monitor weather patterns and water inflows and in communities in flood-prone areas to stay vigilant and adhere to all safety guidelines. The federal government has announced the launch of its compressed natural gas e-portal for youths in the commercial transport sector, particularly those interested in operating CNG-powered tricycles across the country. Minister of State for Youth Development, Ayodili Olawandi, stated this when he unveiled the distribution of 2,000 CNG-powered tricycles to empower Nigerian youth through the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative, PICNG. Ayodili emphasized that the youth portal aims to help build transparency around the process of enlisting youth into the Presidential CNG Initiative in the transport sector. He urged youths working in the commercial sector or those interested in joining to register and benefit from the PICNG as a significant part of President Bolat Tinubu's palliative program. And in some foreign news, Kenya's parliament is set to impeach the deputy president, Rigathi Gachagua, in a political drama that has exposed the rift in the governing party. Lawmakers have accused the 59-year-old deputy of corruption, undermining the government and practicing ethnically divisive politics, among a host of other charges. Gachangwa has denied the accusations as outrageous and sheer propaganda, saying it was a scheme to hound him off the office. Gachangwa, a businessman from Kenya's biggest tribe in Kikuyu, weathered previous corruption scandals to become deputy leader as President William Ruto's running mate in a closely fought election in August 2022. If impeached, Gachagua will become the first deputy president to be removed in this way since the possibility was introduced in Kenya's revised 2010 constitution. And then in sports news, the Nigeria Football Federation NFF insists Tosi Adara Bioyo must reach out if he is willing to play for the Super Eagles. Adara Bioyo moved to Premier League giant Chelsea in the summer and is willing to change international allegiance. The 27-year-old was approached by former Super Eagles head coach Ose Pesero last year and he was given the chance to play for the team but he turned it down saying he was not ready. The Nigeria Football Federation has now declared that he would need to make a formal move to be considered as a player of the Super Eagles. And that was our news at 12. But just before we go, maintain adequate distance from the vehicle ahead of you to avoid collision. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X, Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961, Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube, Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website at www.trafficradio961.ng. 
Did you know that the Sawol Lua administration supplied 86,012 furniture sets to 775 public schools? Well, you can get more details on the Lagos State Government website and to end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Government, through the Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development, has hosted a summit to celebrate the World Habitat Day, aimed at raising awareness creating motivation and promoting initiatives concerning the condition of human settlements globally. The Nigeria Hydrological Service Agency, NIHSA, has assured that water levels in the river Niger is under control as the country prepares for potential flooding. We also told you that Kenya's parliament is set to impeach the deputy president, Rigathi Gachagua, in a political drama that has exposed a rift in the governing party. And then in sports in Nigeria, Football Federation NFF insists Tosi Adarabioyo must reach out if he is willing to play for the Super Eagles. And for contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio 961.ng. And that ends the newscast compiled by Adiswa Ejoyoka. Thank you for listening. My name is Mike James. Beautiful Tuesday afternoon to you, Lagos. Stay safe out there.